And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, wow, that sounds right back up there with the PlayStation. Um, my controller needs to be charged. But uh, welcome to uh again, uh, 2018. This evening, doing another TV review. Well, TV slash web series, whatever you want to call it. Cause Street Fighter, the last one was kind of the same thing. But this one um is a very very good one. Uh, I've been saying that about of all of them, but. It highly really is. It's a Mortal Kombat uh, legacy, and it's pretty much a nine episode, um, short episodes given the origins of the Mortal Kombat characters before, before it gets to the tournament. And it's a lot darker than what the original New Line Cinema version um, was. I'm not trying to bash on, on it because I'm going to review those as well and give the, the pros and the cons. First, with the web series, I'm going to start with the cons. Uh, let me adjust my back. So the cons with this series in particular, for one, um, with all the Mortal Kombat one characters from the game, it didn't it didn't have them all in this season. They, you know, uh, Liu Kang and Kung Lao were the only ones that were missing, I believe, and and Goro. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, oh, and Reptile. <sighs> and Aramak, if you want to be OCD about it, but. Some of those characters, uh, they come in season two, and even jump the gun even further. Some of the some of the Mortal Kombat two characters appear on here, like Shao Kahn, Melina, Sindel, and Katana. And that was pretty much my own issue. My well, my next issue was that I wish the episodes were, were a little bit longer, you know. Um, but they did still do a good job catching the the drama and the depth and the reason why all the characters are in the tournament fighting. Um. Pretty much, uh, my uh, that's one of the pros of the series. But I was just saying, and I was thinking about it while I was subliminally watching it because I was drawing at the same time. Uh, if they had more of a budget and they did it a little bit like the Avengers style and they could have made their own, you know, feature films, that would have worked a heck of a lot better. And, you know, I could have broke, yeah, me personally, if I had the time, I would have broke it down to what, what the movie was going to be called, the characters, and the, and the synopsis. And just like with the MCU, you know, they would have had their own villain, their own conflict, and the Mortal Kombat tournament would be the Avengers piece where they all are in the tournament together and then even follow up the same way in, in Phase 2. So, you know, it was just, that's how I would have done it. You know, hopefully another round. They want to do something like that because this web series it, it really breathed new light in the Mortal Kombat film franchise and how it was really taken seriously, especially when they got to season two. You know, they got to the fighting, even though it wasn't that many combatants, but the the brutality was amped up. You know, and uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the episodes personally. Uh, I think the first one on here, I can't rem really remember. Probably oh it was Jackson Sonya, Stryker and um Kano, uh they got most of the the how can I say this the um the counterparts correct, except the difference is that Jackson Sonya are on the SWAT team in the game they're in the, in the military I think Stryker was the only one who was part of police force, that's my only nitpick and then of course uh Kano, they got his part right with the whole Black Dragon Clan and then um the the nice change is that. Is later revealed that they were working with the with the Lin Kuei, which is of Zero's clan is with, and they're doing a cyber initiative. So I did, you know, didn't mind that change. Um, it really utilized Michael Jai White as being Jax, because originally he was going to be Jax in Mortal Kombat Annihilation, but he was shooting Spawn at the, at the time. So, you know, who would have known? We probably still could have seen him if the schedule conflict, uh, the, the scheduling was different. And again, Michael Jai White, he he is a known good martial artist. That's, and um, I think my uh, I could be wrong. I think what bumped him up to the action stardom was the movie Spawn. But even in that, he didn't do any much hand to hand combat. Um, most of it was just bad, bad CG and whatnot. But he was still perfect for playing Al Simmons. I'm I'm not gonna you know diss him on that. He was perfect for the role. It was just you try to do best with with the material you're given with, and um, 
I have some other films I'm going to review and I'm going to pretty much say the same thing. And then, um, but even on this, the con a little bit with Michael Jai White is that uh, they didn't utilize the character counterpart that much because the good thing he is fighting, he is, and they made it more realistic with him, you know, with his fighting and, and him using his weapon and all that. But uh, when it came to his metal arms and him being that character and in, in incarnation, we just didn't see that. It was it was talked about and then the episode cut and then we never saw it again. So when we get to season two, I'm going to get in details why they they didn't really push more heavy on continue the series. Um, you know, uh, Kano was really utilized. They even the actor who they cast, he. He did a very good job. He captured what Trevor Goddard had did. Um, I think that's his name. I could hope I'm not mispronouncing it. Um, the guy that played the original Kano in Mortal Kombat, who had that heavy Australian accent, and it fit with the character so well that in later games they made him Australian. And I don't know if this actor, this particular actor, is Australian. Um, he's in some other films. I know he's in It Man too. And the sad part about it is that. Um, he passed away, so I don't know. There's an interview with him saying he is, or I can look it up on, on you know, IMDb. Uh, actually, both actors passed, um, but they were really good martial artists. The scenes I did see him in, and it man, he 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 is a good boxer. You know, he he convinced me. But um, you know, uh, they they really utilized the gaming effect with him being Kano and his skin being ripped and you see the metal eye and whatnot um and other uh information uh let me see oh yeah scorpion is up zero um i liked what they did with them too they literally made it uh like a classic ninja you know feudal japan ninja fight and it is kind of weird with the continuity because you know even when i was thinking of doing their origin story i was like how would it, that usually work? And um, I'm not going to give any ideas. You know, only thing I can really pretty much say is some kind of time travel, but it's going to be, you know, a, a basic, you know, cheap way. And, <laughs> you know, um, you can ask, you know, ask me in the comment section, but it's utilizing with the time period. But even in, I think it was implied it was in, it was in feudal Japan. I don't think they never really stated, but, it would still be a good with the, with like I said, with the canon and the Mortal Kombat timeline if they ever reboot it again and, and they do it pretty much what I'm pretty much saying right now. They make either a television series with all the characters and then it leads up to the movie, which is a tournament. And hopefully that that'll, that format will actually work. Um, it'll pretty much be, be like a soap opera, you know, you can introduce these characters and then right after the characters had their introduction for like that 40 minute slot of which each episode, then it will jump into intercutting in between, you know, different, um, different stories. So, you know, eventually you, they can, you know, tease and hint that these characters are meat or it's, it's that connection before it gets to the tournament. But again, that's just my rambling idea, but back to Scorpion is up zero. Uh, their story was like again most of the good decent ones they really wanted to spend money on there were like two episodes you know uh two parters pretty much and it really showed his origin how he, he became you know the, the hell spawn of, of the nether realm and all that and i'm not going to really spoil it for you because it's been out there for a while i kind of want to move on to the next point anyway i was just giving them glory even the fight choreography despite of them actually fighting in the snow and, and it was kind of hard because if it look if kind of fooled me a little bit i was like it's kind of funny how you can film this fighting in the snow and you know because i must i must be thinking most of the, my fight scenes in the snow they're gonna be blizzard like and it's really gonna be people trying to trying to kill each other and and you know you worrying about the weather can be at your advantage or disadvantage or you just won't, wouldn't worry about it depending on how strong you are but anyway let me move on to the next one um the other two episodes was Katana and um, Melina. And again, the fight choreography was also very good. It's, it's two, you know, feminine female women. And um, the actresses who they got, they it, it is like what they say behind most martial arts movies. It is a, a ballet or a dance. You're in sync. And 
you know, um, when we get to the Matrix, of course, I'm going to repeat much more detail what they were, you know, what they were saying. But um, throughout all the Mortal Kombat characters, uh, not Melina, Katana was one of my favorites. And I was trying to stray away from not saying who my favorite is because I think I'm a Street Fighter. I didn't. But um, I think her and Sindel were my two favorite female characters because uh, the fans are pretty cool. The Banshee scream is pretty cool. You know, uh, I think it's like a, one of the, the superheroes. I know Black Canary. And then there was a, was a Banshee from X-Men. But, you know, um, the story itself pretty much came from the game. I think it went in full detail. And I can't really remember at the time what had came out if it was this series or the reboot of the video game Mortal Kombat uh, 9. Because I know in 9, all the origins, it was pretty much a, a, a time change um, from the first game, all, I mean, all the way back to the first game, but all the character origins have remained the same. Um, so I really couldn't remember if Boone had originally had some of the seeds planted in the original game because you only knew the little bit of the story about the character bio and what he gave in the beginning. And of course the movies were trying to fill in the gap and write in some of their own stuff. Um, but uh, the drama and whatnot was very, was, was done decent to my satisfactory. It just blows that, like I said, if they had a full, you know, hour and, and actually like two hours Two hours or two hours and thirty minutes time, the drama could have been much more, you know, um, effective later on with the fighting. But um, the good thing about those two episodes, the anime, the anime piece in it was really good. It kind of it threw me back a little bit to Kill Bill Volume One when it showed the animation, you know, of Oren's past. So that was a nice little little nod, you know, pullback. Um, and the last. The last two stories, um, they were both one-parters. Uh, Raiden's, um, Raiden's was kind of funny, but I did like it at the same time. Here's a little bit, um, I think Thor kind of ripped, well, somebody ripped somebody off when they fell from the sky, and, and people thought they were crazy, saying they were a god. And, you know, but with Mortal Kombat, it was a little more darker. He fell straight into a mental institution, and, of course... You know, instead of letting him go, they they drugged him and sedated him, and they they pretty much put him in the uh, in the institution. Um, and bit by bit, you know, he he's trying to get his power back. But the strange thing is that he's a god, and he's actually these drugs are actually affecting him. And that was a weird part about it. But they gave him some kind of strong sedative, where it was a regular human being. I guess they would have died, but he gets his power back when um, he gets tased and his full strength comes in. And even the guy that cast his rating, he looked really good, um, despite of him looking like a, a drug addict, you know. But um, out of all the stories that were different, that was the one that took a little bit of a left field. Um, but it was still done pretty well, like like pretty much a four out of five. Um, just that I wanted more out of it. And um, the last one, and the last one's kind of funny, but realistic and sad at the same time. The last one is Johnny Cage. And... Uh, you know, they, of course, made his modern. They said he was on the Power Rangers, all this and that and the other. And ironically, even the guy that, that they cast as the actor to play Johnny Cage, he, he was on the Power Rangers and, and, and Kamen Rider. Uh, but the most messed up part about it in the story, he's a failed actor. And um, even in the original movie, people were calling him fake. And that's how he got sucked into fighting it in, in the tournament. You know, win the tournament, you win the respect. Yes, but... Um, the messed up part was, uh, he was pitching show ideas and then the producers steal his idea. And I'm like, oh, wow, this kind of reminds me of what happened with Bruce Lee. Because the same thing happened with Bruce Lee. He was an action, you know, he was a rising action movie star. I think at the time he was, uh, right after the Hornet got canceled, he was pitching the idea for Kung Fu. And then that's when the producers had stolen from him and... Ironically, uh, allegedly, they later come back and try to negotiate with him to do Into the Dragon. And, you know, um, it's, it's different stories from what people say. You know, Linda and Shannon had their version. And then there's some of the producers and people who worked on the movie. They had their version, you know. Um, but, you know, we'll talk about that when, when, when we get to Into the Dragon as well. But 
um, it's just kind of funny how out of all of the stories, the most realest one was Johnny Cage. And I say that because he's a joke character and his character is the reason why the Mortal Kombat game exists in the first place. Um, the origin of the of the game came from a failed deal with Sega Genesis and, and uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. And uh, their first character they created for Mortal Kombat wasn't called Mortal Kombat at the time, but it was Johnny Cage. He was a whole... He was a whole render of that whole thing, and, you know, he's like one of my favorite characters as well. But uh, in the actual Mortal Kombat, in this Legacy series, he has one of the, in my opinion, one of the best realistic stories, you know. It has a drama, a drama and all that. He's a Hollywood action movie star, and he's just falling on hard times, and, you know, that that's pretty much a sucky, you know, position. But um, that's pretty much my banter on the whole Mortal Kombat uh, Season 1, uh, well, Mortal Kombat Legacy Season 1, and I see you guys in Season 2, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.